Quick message to all our viewers before we get started on today's video. It has come to our attention that over 90% of our regular viewers are not subscribed to the channel. We request you to please click the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can be notified when the next video from Mythlok is out. The bigger the channel gets, the better the quality of videos that we do for you also gets. So please help us make some amazing videos by supporting the channel and clicking that subscribe button. Thank you. Now over to the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlok with your host Nitin Nair. After looking at the three-headed elephant Erawan in our previous episode, we thought let's travel all the way around to the Middle East where we will be looking at one of the most important gods in Babylonian civilization and their mythology, Enlil. The Mesopotamian god of the atmosphere, Enlil, is a part of the triad of gods that includes Ea and An. He was often referred to as Lord of the Air. The gentle winds of spring and the hurricane that hit the city were said to be the breath that Enlil used to issue his command or word. Although An was regarded as the highest god in Sumerian hierarchy, Enlil was a more important figure. He was known for being the god of agriculture and the founder of Nippur. According to the myth of the creation of the Ho, Enlil separated earth and heaven to make room for seeds. Enlil created a tool known as the Ho, which broke the hard surface of the earth. Another myth states that he was imprisoned and eventually killed after he had impregnated Ninlil, a grain goddess. This story is related to the agricultural cycle which revolves around winter inactivity, fertilization and ripening. Marduk replaced Enlil as the head of the Babylonian pantheon. Despite this, he was regarded as a high god of the city of Nippur. He continued to be an important deity in the region until the second millennium BC. Enlil was depicted with a horn cap on a bearded person, which has seven superimposed ox horns. This type of cap was regarded as a symbol of divinity and it has been worn by various gods ever since the 3rd millennium BC. The horn cap was consistent in its form and meaning throughout the Sumerian prehistory. It remained so until the time of the Persian Empire's conquest. Enlil was the god of the sky and the earth and the father of the moon god Sin or Nana and the grandfather of the great goddess Ishtar or Inanna. His primary consort was the grain and fertility goddess Ninlil, lady of the air who also was known as Sud. Enlil is sometimes referred to as the child of Ninki and Enki who were respectively the gods of wisdom and the lord and lady earth. Enki on the other hand is regarded as the twin brother of Adad and Ishkur which makes him a son of Enlil. Inanna, who was often depicted as daughter of Enki, was also mentioned as a child of Enlil. These contradictions are the result of Mesopotamia's long history and the various cultures that adopted the gods and made them their own. Sometimes these changes are repeated or expanded upon in older stories and different scribes simply rewrote the tales to fit their own purposes. Enlil was also known as Elil, Nunamir, which was found in literary texts, and the Greek version, Ilinos. Enlil was originally from the city of Nippur. He became more prominent as a member of the Babylonian gods, which also includes An and Enki. At one point, he had the Tablets of Destiny, which gave him great power over the universe and mankind. Although he was sometimes kind, he was also a stern and harsh person. Enlil was a god of the weather and he was responsible for the great floods that destroyed all humans on earth except for the family of Atrahasis. He frequently appeared in various Mesopotamian tablets such as those made by Sumerian, Akkadian, Hittite and Canaanite. His name was sometimes called Elil in literature from these regions. As part of the great trio of gods, Enlil was responsible for the skies and the earth. Ea was a steward of the waters, while An was a ruler of the deep heavens. 
Enlil's worship declined after he was taken away from Ninki and into Marduk. However, he was still honored in various cities and it was believed that he and his companion Anu had given their blessings and power to the city. During the Neo-Assyrian Empire's time, the gods Asur, Nabu and Marduk were regarded as the most important deities. According to Adam Stone, Enlil's power was widely remembered during this period. Following the Assyrian Empire's fall in 612 BCE, Enlil lost his temples and statues to the Assyrian gods. Gods such as Marduk who were able to transcend the association with Enlil in the minds of the people continued to live on. By the time of his death in 140 BCE, Enlil had already been forgotten. This is a typical case where a character or a god whose value consistently continues to diminish as time goes on and is replaced by other gods who are given the responsibilities or who have a much higher stature in the minds of the people. We have seen this in Egyptian mythology and a couple of other mythologies where kingdoms and rulers come to pass, certain gods just fade away into oblivion. A lot of research has been done about the Babylonian civilization and scientists and researchers and archaeologists are coming up with proof of the importance of Enlil in the time that he was prominent. But as we have just discussed, his popularity and importance diminished during the existence of these civilizations themselves, which make it extremely difficult for us to truly understand the magnitude at which Enlil was considered to be important during his time. We will be looking at a lot more of such characters who have faded in importance during the existence of their civilization and also characters who are part of the huge, complex and extremely dynamic system that was being followed in the Middle East. Until then, drop us a like, a subscribe, a comment, give us some feedback on how you like this episode and also please let us know if there are any characters that you would like us to focus on and we would be very happy to oblige. This is your host Nitin Naya signing out by reminding you once again that Mythlok is the home of mythology.